Oh my gosh. Have we saved the best for last? This is the color of the year to end all colors of the year for 2023. Pantone has finally announced what they think is the big color for 2023. So in today's video, what I wanna do is quickly reflect on the previous 10 colors of the year by this company and see how things have changed over the years. Then we'll talk about this year's color. And what I've also done is I went ahead and kind of matched up different paint companies version of said color. So if you wanna go and buy it for your walls, you don't gotta worry about a custom color match. You can get something pretty close in whatever paint company you use. So let's get into this. Pantone is really the authority, I would say, when it comes to color. And not just in interior design, but design as a whole. So that's graphic design, that's fashion, that's textiles, whatever the case may be. And I wanna preface with that because when you see some of these colors, don't think, wow, how would I ever put that on my walls? These colors of the year are all reflective of design as a massive whole, like the umbrella of the whole thing. So let's quickly get into it. 10 years back, we're at 2013. I got my laptop here, Emerald. So a beautiful, vibrant, kind of cool green, really, really great, very bold. We shift to 2014, Radiant Orchid, another very dynamic color. This one sort of combines pink, purple, fuchsia, a little bit of magenta maybe, but very, very upbeat, I would say. 2015 is interesting because we have Marsala, which is actually a brown red, which is kind of interesting because that's sort of what we've come back to in the paint world. But eight years ago, we have Pantone telling us this is the color moving forward. Just earthy, you know, rich, kind of clay colored, that sort of vibe. A bit of a red wine vibe, maybe a little bit. 2016 was an interesting year for Pantone because they introduced their first dual or joint colors of the year. And it's kind of funny because they picked Rose Quartz and Serenity, which are both pastels for the most part. And honestly, they just look like really cliche boy and girl baby nursery colors. But hey, 2017 was an interesting take on green in greenery. And this is a green that has a lot of a yellow undertone present, really vibrant, electrifying, less of an earthy, natural, organic green, a little more in your face. And then in a slightly similar vein, we have ultraviolet in 2018. So purple, purple is back. This color is very rich, very optimistic, a little futuristic, I would say too. And then in 2019, living coral. Hmm, interesting. So Benjamin Moore's color of the year is Raspberry Blush, which is a very vibrant coral. This one doesn't look quite as saturated, but it's more of a true coral. So a nice mix of orange and pink fused together, but it kind of goes to show you that graphic design and fashion maybe has a little bit of a leg up on interior design, maybe. That's just my guess. 2020 gave us classic blue, and this one was a bit of a snooze fest for me for whatever reason, just because it's just blue. Like it's pretty saturated. It's, it's way more bright than a navy blue, which has a little bit of a blackened effect. But yeah, just kind of a blue, like a Toronto Maple Leafs blue. Great. 2021, another joint affair. This one is a little more interesting. So you have boring gray, <laughs> ultimate gray, and then illuminating. So a pretty vibrant, spunky yellow, very vivacious and zesty, but also a little lighter. Like it's not a deep, super saturated yellow. It just has a lot of vibrancy to it. So it gives you both options to play with, a really calm neutral and something electrifying. And you can incorporate them together for a really cool effect. I kind of like that. Now we're at last year's choice, which is very Perry. Another purple. Okay, although this one is more of a periwinkle purple. So it has a sort of slightly dusted blue quality to it, which is interesting, but again, purple, purple, purple. There's a lot of purple, but we have seen purple a few times in the past couple of years. What is this year's color of the year? There is a little bit of that purple too in the undertones, but it's way more about red and pink. The Pantone color of the year for 2023 is called Viva Magenta. And this is a color that is super juicy. It's like a berry red. They like to sort of package this color as being empowering, but not quite aggressive. Maybe because it has just a red quality, which is passionate, but it's slightly softened with some purple and pink a little bit. So it's a little more joyful, I would say, a little more playful. And it's totally an electrifying color. I almost see it as a further amplification of the paint colors we've been seeing being very popular these days. Sherwin-Williams had Red End Point, which is sort of a slightly red undertone, kind of earthy, dusty, sandy color. Benjamin Moore had Raspberry Blush, which definitely upped up that vibrancy, that saturation. And then Viva Magenta. So going outside of the paint bubble 
going into design as a whole, we really see huge saturation, but still kind of based in red, which I think is interesting. So what we're gonna do now is I'm going to give you some Viva Magenta color matches in several different paint companies. So if you wanted to use this in your home, on your walls or whatever, you at least have a paint color you can at least grab a chip of and analyze in person rather than on a screen. So before I give you these color matches, here's a disclaimer. These are not spot on matches. What they are, are pretty close alternatives to Viva Magenta. That way you have an actual paint color to base it on from your favorite paint company. I find it's always safer to start with that rather than just a digital representation of a color that you plunk into the computer and then hope for the best. Instead, you can use one of these paint colors, grab a chip of it, and then see if you like that color because it's gonna give you something similar. And then you just need to befriend your local paint store color matcher to make the necessary tweaks for you. So first, First, my Dunn Edwards match is called Merlot, and this is probably not my favorite match of the bunch, but it sort of is in the same ballpark. I would say it's a little more of a burgundy kind of feeling color. You don't really get that electrifying sort of pink quality as much, but in Dunn Edwards, that's pretty close. If we're talking about Glidden paint, then I found a color called Racy Red. Not too bad. This one definitely has a little more of that pinky quality to it. Maybe even has a touch more magenta than Viva Magenta. But again, another decent match. PPG's Red Licorice is a decent match as well. A little more red leaning, I would say, but not bad. Bare Paint has a pretty solid representation of this color in Cherry Wine. So if you're a fan of Bare Paint products, that's a great color chip to grab and see if it works in your space. So we got two more matches. So an honorable mention to Benjamin Moore's Blushing Red and Candy Cane Red. I feel like they both capture the essence of Viva Magenta, although one's a little bit lighter and definitely more pinky, and then one's a bit deeper and darker and more red leaning. So maybe you want something that's kind of in between the two, but the nice thing is you can sort of tweak how intense or saturated you want to go by picking the darker color or going with a slightly lighter alternative. But I would say my favorite Viva Magenta clone or close match, I would say, is by Sherwin-Williams, and the color is called Cherry's Jubilee. This color technically seems a little bit darker. Maybe it has a slightly lower LRV, but its balance is very similar, and I really enjoy it. It's also very different from the Sherwin-Williams color of the year, which is right over here. Technically has a bit of a red undertone, but very different color altogether. Subscribe for our six videos a week, and let me know in the comment section what you thought of Pantone's 2023 color of the year.